we're joined again in the studio by the analytics team to present the final three problems to us. And you will start with problem H. Do we have, do we have sound? Yep. All right, yes, welcome. Uh, I forgot the name again. Um, it was not a uh, robot. Oh, robot start. something. <laughs> I think room something. Okay. Room, room service. service. Room yeah, service. Room service. So, do we have sound? Uh, do we have sound on the uh, studio I guest? Uh, I have sound. Has to be on. Okay. Uh, again, problem H. So, problem H is room service. Um, the question was, uh, there is this room, which is a... Um, a convex uh, shaped uh, room. There is a robot in the room, it's uh, denoted by this uh, point, point P, and the question is as follows, uh, the, the robot should walk around the room and it must uh, visit all the walls in of, on, of the room and do so in a path and return to its original position um, in as short as path as possible. So there's one, um, well, one uh, possible tour uh, uh, shown here. It starts off here, it can actually walk, well, okay, so that's, this is already showing one of the special uh, the things, tricky things you have to take care of. It can also, it can visit both um, a, a, the si uh, um, a, um, a wall somewhere halfway on its side, but it can also visit two walls at the same time in a corner. So if it visits this corner, it, will visit, it, it has visited both this lower wall and this side wall. So that's an effic very efficient way of, 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 of uh, well, visiting two walls at the same time. So. We see here that it goes first, can go first to this, this corner, then it can go up and visit this uh, single wall on top here, go to this corner and return to its original position. So now the question is how to find the shortest path. Um, so, well, what you can notice here is a very important observation is that if this robot is visiting this wall um, here halfway, it will actually um, bounce off, so it will kind of hit the wall and then leave the wall at an angle which is actually the same angle as it um, um, entered at. And this we can um, see by doing this uh, trick which is very common in, in such geometry problems is doing a mirror image uh, trick. We can say, well, if I want to go from this point, this corner to this corner, and I want to take the shortest path, this guy can uh, look at the same way as say, saying, well, I'm kind of going, I'm, I'm mirroring the, the, this, 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 uh, the, the room into this, in the viewing this wall as a mirror, so that means that this point, this corner here, will actually mirror to this point there, and then it's obvious that the shortest path is just a straight line, but the straight line through the mirror means that it's going to reflect off, I mean, this angle is the same as this angle, and it will be the same as this angle. So we see that if I have a path which somewhere hits the wall, somewhere halfway, it must do so with incoming and outgoing angles being the same. Okay, so with this observation, then we have to, well, do a m another step. We have to, um, well, look at which, which walls are going to be visited somewhere halfway and which walls are going to be visited somewhere in, in corners. Uh, and at corners, we don't have this, this, this um, ingoing, outgoing angle. But then what we can do is we'll say, well, let's try and see if we, from one corner to some other corner, and then if we go from one corner, say, to this corner, we know that all the intermediate walls which are not visited from these corners, um, by, by in these corners, have to be visited somewhere halfway in between. So what we do is do this mirror trick and repeat it over and over again. And then we find the shortest distance. And then we can say, well, we start from here, and we can look at any way of going, well, we can do a dynamic programming approach, essentially. We can say, well, from this point on, we can search the shortest path to any one of these corners being the next corner to be visited, and then finally, from some of these, from a corner, try and visit the next corner, and then finally try to return to the, the point P. So we have to loop over all corners to be visited, initial corners to visit. Well, okay, so it's, it's going to be a, uh, a dynamic programming approach over the loops, and then for this, we do this mirroring image trick. So then there's one tricky corner case, which is kind of, well, not really a corner case, it's actually visiting no corners at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that's, for example, this case. So if I have this equilateral triangle, and I have a point which maybe in this case is exactly on the, well, kind of inscribed triangle here. Um, so in this case, we're not going to visit any corners at all. So this is a case you have to be careful about and, well, 
um, kind of a corner case. Um, so I think there's no solutions, at least up to the freeze, no correct solutions for the problem, only a few incorrect ones. Um, it seems that MIT is maybe close to, to really solving it. The other solutions were, well, didn't seem that close. Okay. Half of the test case is correct. Half of the test, Half okay. of the test case. Huh. So was it the uh, corner cases that didn't handle or, or some other class of, could you say anything about which well, they we got? We don't know what's wrong. The code is, again, quite long with this involved geometry and a DP step, so. What, what can you say about the limits? Um... Oh, well, <laughs> sorry. I think I have it's to up to 100 corners. Up to 100 corners. It's Something like that. Fairly large, but not. Yeah, so you can do an n cubed DP. Okay. Sounds like a really hard problem. But these should be the three hardest problems. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the three problems de depicted here are definitely the hardest of this world. Okay. What is it that makes them hard? Um, but for this problem, I would, see there, there, I would say there are two different things that you have to do. It's first the, ge the geometry part with this mirroring. Geometry is always hard, line intersection. And on top of that, you also have to do a, a dynamic programming approach. And I think the combination of these two makes, makes it a hard problem. Okay. Like either one of these steps, the, with just one of these steps, it would have been solved by a lot of teams by now, but the combination. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Okay. What's the next problem? Okay. The, the next problem we're presenting is uh, problem A. It has been solved once by now. It's, uh, it's about a bunch of asteroids where we have space stations on and we want to make a, a network on those space stations so we can contact each other and send each other messages. Um, all the asteroids are points in 3D space, but unfortunately I cannot draw it well, so I made it a 2D picture. <laughs> uh, I wrote three asteroids here and they all have a speed. They're moving in time. Well, at say this is time t is zero. Now we want to make a communication network among these asteroids. Well, and we want to minimize its cost. And to minimize the cost, we should basically do a minimum spanning tree. I think that's something all teams will recognize kind of instantly. But um, the question now is, when these things move over time, this minimum spanning tree also changes. And the basic question is, how many times does this minimum spanning tree change? How many times do we have to completely reroute stuff? Oh. So, um, how to solve this? Uh, the first thing you have to notice is, uh, well, here, well I, I also drew a picture here of how things change. After a bunch of time, this meteor has moved into here, this meteor has moved into there, and this one has moved. And instead of these two edges, it's these two, these two edges that form the tree. Yeah. Well, what you should notice is that there are only a finite amount of times where the minimum spanning tree can possibly change. And that is when two points have a distance to each other which equals the distance of another pair of points. When that happens, well, one of these edges might get removed and the other one gets added to the tree. Okay. So we, we find, uh, at first we find all these pairs of pairs of distances and th th this, this leads to like 1.5 million times where the tree could possibly change. The, the rounds are very small on this problem so you only get to like over a little over a million times. And well, when we have found those times, we should, we should see whether the tree actually changes. Well, the way to do that is calculate the tree on these times minus a little bit and on these times plus a little bit and see whether it actually became smaller. Um, that's the basic approach of the problem, but unfortunately, calculating 1.5 million times a minimum spanning tree times out, so you have to come with a smart optimization here. And that is to discard lots of these changes on beforehand. Some, you know, if when a pair of points has the same distance, either one of those edges should be in the current spanning tree, otherwise it cannot be removed. And if you discard all these times from the start, then you, you have to compute the minimum spanning tree way less times and you actually come to a solution. Okay. And, and finally over to the last problem, J. Okay, so the last problem, J, is uh, well, it's a combination of geometry and uh, graph theory. So what we have here is uh, the Earth. Um, we have uh, a few points which are airports on the Earth. So there's one here, one there, one, and there's a fourth one over there. And we want to find uh, a flight route from, from uh, one airport, say this one, to that one. Um, but there's, well, safety regulations involved. So we cannot um, um, move away, um, move uh, out of a certain ra radius from any airport. So we ha always have to be in, say, within a certain distance from, from any airport during our, our, uh, our flight. 
Um, so that's these circles depicted here. So these circles um, show the radius uh, around the sa this, this safety radius around each airport. Um, so we ha and we always have to be within the safety radius of at least one airport. So it means that we have to be within one of these circles all of the time. Then we have to find the shortest route from, from say, this airport to that airport. Um, so, well, we can see here that the shortest route would be something like this. We travel from here to this point where there's two circles intersecting. Then we travel to that second point and then we travel to there. This would be the shortest route in this, in this particular case. Um, well, there's actually a th a another constraint in the problem. It says that also your plane has an, uh, a limited capacity of fuel capacity. So, I mean, if this, if this distance would be too, too far for the, for the plane to reach the destination without refueling, it would possibly have to go to this airport, refuel there, and then go up to that, uh, the final destination. Okay, so that's the two constraints. Um, so, l if we kind of ignore the, the geometry for now, we see that this is going to be a, a graph, a graph uh, shortest path problem. Uh, well, actually, two shortest path problems. Um, so, first of all, what are the nodes that we possibly are going to visit? These are actually all the airports themselves and any intersections of two, uh, two of these spheres. I mean, if there's a, a route which would go through here, then there's always a shorter route which will ex actually exactly visit these, these, um, these intersection points. So we can just add all the airports and all these intersections points to a po as points in our graph, um, add the edges between all the, all the possible edges which stay inside the allowed region um, to the graph. And then, well, we have to do two shortest path distances, uh, calculate uh, two shortest path um, 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 calculations. First, we have to find um, any airport we can reach from any other airport. I mean, we have to stay within the the, the allowed fuel consumption, the allowed fuel we have. And then, given that we know from each airport which other airport we can reach in the shortest time, we can search for the full path as a path between air airports, like hops between different airports to the final destination. That sounds not too hard. But then the problem is really the geometry. And this is often with geometry problems. If you see the problem, the solution looks not so hard and easy to implement. But then often it turns out that the geometry itself, which is to the eye really simple, is very difficult um, in, in, in really uh, coding it into, a, well, into a, a, so a program that really solves this. So what we have to do is, for example, find these intersection points as intersections of two circles on the Earth surface, so which is a curved surface, again, a a ball, so this is going to be intersection points in 3D. Well, okay, I'm not going to do all the maths here, but um, you'll have to have a, have a s clever representation and, 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 well, don't make any mistakes. Then there's another problem, actually, which I can quickly show here. For example, if we want to go from this airport to that airport, there's a direct route which stays within, um, always within the vicinity of one of these airports. But this route is, well, it's not um, um, visiting any um, intermediate um, intersection points of these two circles, but it is also not um, staying either within the, the range of the first airport or the final destination airport. There's some other airport in between. So what we have to do is actually detect whether all the time during our flight we are within the range of at least one airport. So the way to do that would be to say um, for for each, um, um, for example, we can see that um, this part of our flight is covered by the first airport, this part of our flight is covered by the second airport, and this part of our flight is covered by the third airport, and then we have to calculate the, uh, the, the intervals on our flight which um, uh, are covered by these separate uh, airports, and then sh actually check whether these uh, intervals completely cover the whole, the whole flight which is a bit messy and, and a, a very difficult, well, it's a combination of geometry and then afterwards solving a, a shortest path problem. So this is clearly actually the, I guess, the hardest problem in the set. Okay. And hasn't been submitted, there's no, been no real, uh, real, uh, real try to submit this, uh, this problem. Okay, so the problem set at least wasn't too easy. No. Now you see a common theme in these problems. They're all, there are multiple stages here. You have the geometry plus the DP, you have difficult 
like 3D geometry plus sort of path problem. Here you have minimum spanning tree plus some optimization and in call and also calculating the points where it intersects. They are very involved, the hard problems. So, so all of them have a uh, geometry component. Yeah. Which uh, is pretty much in line with what we said in the beginning that at least my instinct has always been if I see something that looks like geometry, I stay avoid away. it. Yeah, yeah, I stay away. Yeah, that always worked for me as well.